My stepmother framed me for stealing my stepsister's college fund. My father kicked me out without a second thought minus eight years later. He returned begging for my help after learning the truth. My relationship with him has been strained for the past eight years, and we have not been on speaking terms. After I had just graduated from college, he kicked me out of the house when I was 21 years old. A few months passed, during which I was living with my family until I started working and eventually saved up enough money to move out on my own. At the age of seven, my parents went through a divorce, and when I became 17, my father began a relationship with my stepmother, Becca additionally. Becca had been married in the past, however, sadly, her spouse had passed away six years before the time that she began dating my father. Additionally, she had a daughter from a prior relationship and her name was Alexa, and she was my stepsister, and she was four years younger than I was. I had a pretty strange feeling about Becca and Alexa when I first saw them. It seemed as though they were not pleased to have the opportunity to meet me. I didn't give it much attention because I believed it was possible that they were just shy. In spite of this, I found that the more time I spent with them, the less I believed they liked me. Not only did Becca and Alexa move in with us after a year of dating, but that was also the year that I moved out to complete my undergraduate education. When I was at home, I didn't spend a lot of time with them. Only when I returned home for the holidays would I have the opportunity to spend time with my family. Whenever I returned, they would behave in a really peculiar manner when they were near me. Despite the fact that they were married when I was in my second year of college, they did not appear to have any feelings for me on any level. It was as if they did not appreciate my presence, and they appeared to be more happy when it was just them and my father. I am not sure how to put it into words exactly, but it would appear that they did not like my presence, because I didn't want to be living in a household where I was constantly made to feel unwelcome. I decided to have a conversation with my father about this matter after I had graduated and moved back in with the idea of staying at home in order to save some money before moving out permanently. However, when I brought it up with him, he told me that I was simply making it up and that Becca and Alexa loved me far more than I thought they did. I made the decision to put my faith in what he was going to say and moved back in. Nevertheless, within a couple of weeks, he was shown to be incorrect. There is no doubt that they did not love me. In fact, they detested the presence of someone like me in their lives. Becca never showed any sign of warmth toward me and just occasionally acknowledged my existence. It appeared as though Alexa had a grudge against me, as she was persistently attempting to irritate me and pick arguments with me for no apparent reason. It was something that I brought up with my father on a few occasions, but due to the fact that their conduct around him was totally different, he believed that I was exaggerating the problem and that they were most likely simply growing used to having me around. This continued for a couple of months, and despite my best efforts to steer clear of them, they continued to make my life more challenging than it already was. I even stopped whining to my father about it at some point since I realized there was no purpose in continuing to do so. The only thing I wanted was to put away enough money so that I could finally move out. Becca and Alexa framed me for stealing Alexa's college savings which has resulted in my being tossed out of my home in a manner that was rather rudely performed. Becca and Alexa were driving me crazy and I really wanted to move out as soon as possible. One day, around midday I left the house to go house searching with a number of my friends, I was looking for a new place to live because those two were driving me crazy. After I returned home in the evening, I saw that my father had already arrived. As soon as I walked into the house, he gave me the expression of being highly dissatisfied and instructed me to gather my belongings and go. The fact that I was unaware of what was taking place caused me to be taken aback. I asked him what was going on and he responded by saying that he had never anticipated that I would turn out to be such a hopeless and desperate lowlife. He never imagined that I would go to such lengths for the sole purpose of obtaining financial gain, despite the fact that I had no idea what he was talking about, tears began to well up in my eyes since the things that he was saying were so judgmental. Instead of making an effort to communicate with me, he informed me that he was unable to spare any time for my performance and required me to depart without delay. Following that, Becca entered the room and immediately began yelling at me for destroying Alexa's hopes and dreams. It was her assertion that I had done all of this because I was unable to bear the realization that my father had finally moved on with his life. During the time that she was yelling at me about what I was supposed to have done, I was able to piece together the scenario. On the surface, it seemed as though they were accusing me of stealing money from them, specifically a car that they had provided me for unexpected expenses but that I had instead utilized to make expensive expenditures. Becca stated that I had approached her a few weeks earlier, stating that I was running out of money, and as a result, she had added me to the account where she had stored money for Alexa due to financial constraints. Nevertheless, I had almost completely depleted the account, such that there was no money left over for Alexa's college expenses. The money that she had set aside for her daughter was used to purchase a number of new bags, shoes, and garments from high-end brands. It appears that I had lied about the reason I required the money and utilized it to purchase these items. Due to the fact that none of this had actually taken place, I was completely shocked and she was lying through her teeth. Despite the fact that I requested that she provide me with evidence to back up all of this, my father informed me that there was no need to do so because they had already searched through my room a couple of hours ago 
and discovered all they required to validate her account. He claimed that he had discovered all of the stuff that had been purchased with that card hidden away under my bed in a covert manner. When I told my father that Becca had never even added me to the card, he informed me that she had removed me after receiving a phone call from the bank that morning. This was because I would have known if she had added me to the card. Although it had taken a few hours to complete, it was over now. In response to my request that he call the bank authorities to verify this information, he informed me that he did not require any other evidence to be aware of the fact that his daughter was a thief and a repulsive individual. In spite of the fact that I exerted a great deal of effort to persuade him that Becca was lying, he did not trust me. At some point, I was forced to depart. Following that day, I did not communicate with my father in any way. He had demonstrated to me the things that were most important to him, and after the manner in which I had been insulted, I had no desire to communicate with him ever again. After moving into my first apartment, I stayed with a buddy for a few days before moving in here. There were a few months in which I had a difficult time making ends meet, but after that, I was able to make it on my own. At this point in my life, I am living a really wonderful life, and I even have plans to purchase my own home within the next few months. Over the course of eight years, I have not had any kind of communication with my father, and I have avoided every family gathering that involves his side of the family like the plague because I have never wanted to really meet him. We have maintained communication with one another, and my mother had severed her relationship with my father at the same time that I did. This was due to the manner in which he had treated me. However, at this moment she appears to be taking his side, which is the reason why I am perplexed. It was a few days ago when my father made his appearance at my residence, because I was quite interested in hearing what he had to say, I decided to open the door and talk to him on the phone. The address was reportedly obtained by him from my mother as he informed me. It was only lately that he discovered that my stepmother had fabricated the entire situation, and he stated that he was there to apologize to me for all that had happened previously. Alexa's education fund was something that she had hoped someone would pay for. She had been taking advantage of him for his money for a number of years, and he was completely unaware of it because he believed that he was only providing for his family. He wanted me to forgive him and give him a chance after he had just learned something from his in-laws. He wanted me to give him a chance. It would appear that Becca and her parents had a disagreement a few months ago, and they had lately contacted my father in order to inform him of the facts of the incident that led to my expulsion from the house. She had purchased all of those items for herself and her daughter, but she had strategically placed them in my room in order to frame me and give the impression that I was concealing something. This was exactly what I had expected. She even had her parents phone her pretending to be bank personnel in order to convince my father that she had in fact added me to the card. This was done only for the purpose of protecting her reputation. The actual reason she had done all of this was because she was the one who had used the college fund that her late husband had left for Alexa to pay for her education. She had done this by living a lavish lifestyle. In order to avoid giving the impression that she was a gold digger, she refrained from approaching my father with the request to pay for her costs. The fact that she believed my relationship with my father was going to stand in the way of their relationship was another reason why she detested me. Because of this, she had always had a negative opinion of me. That is how she came up with that plan to get rid of me and to create a circumstance in which my father would be forced to offer to pay for Alexa's college expenses. On account of the fact that the plan was successful, she was able to accomplish two goals at once. During the course of eight years, her parents had remained silent. On the other hand, as a result of their argument, they recently came to the conclusion that it was finally time to unearth some ancient bones and reveal the truth to my father. He disclosed to me that he had already initiated the process of filing for divorce from her a couple of weeks prior, with the assistance of his previous attorney. At this point, he had arrived to make amends with me. In his statement, he mentioned that he was aware that one of my friend's fathers was a well-known divorce attorney. He then requested that I perform my responsibility as his daughter by putting him in contact with my friend's father. A petition that was ridiculously biased in favor of one party had been drafted by Becca and her attorney. A second thing that my father asked me to do was to find a lawyer who would be willing to reduce his fees for him. As a result of the absurd nature of the situation, I ended up laughing in his face before I closed the door. It was hard for me to come up with the idea that he truly thought he could just drop by, apologize, and then ask for my assistance, expecting that everything would be normal again immediately. Clearly, I was not going to be of any assistance to him in any manner, shape, or form. It would be necessary for him to make direct contact with my friend's father in order to hire him as a lawyer, and he would be responsible for paying the fee, just like everyone else. The fact that his previous attorney was unwilling to handle the case because it appeared to be too hard and wanted to retire was not something that I was concerned about. Following the act of shutting the door in his face, I instructed him to leave before I contacted the authorities. My mother phoned me after that to let me know that what I was doing was not appropriate. I had the impression that there was nothing further that could be said, but after that, she called me. 
I am very perplexed as to why she has suddenly taken a position of support for my father, but I became really enraged when she informed me that she did not agree with my decision to refrain from assisting him. It was her assertion that my father was a typical human being just like the rest of us, and that everyone makes errors. It was unfair of me to hold him to an unattainable standard and to act as if it was unacceptable for him to make mistakes just due to the fact that he was my father. It was not that I had a problem with the fact that dad had made a mistake by trusting his wife, rather. The issue that I had a problem with was the fact that he had trusted his wife more than any other person, including me, his daughter. At the time that he kicked me out of the house, he referred to me as a nasty person and a desperate low life. I still haven't forgotten that he said those things. In spite of the fact that he had brought me up and had a direct familiarity with me, he believed that I was capable of committing such heinous acts. Not only did he come to apologize, but he also came to ask for my assistance even after eight years had passed. It is quite unlikely that he would have come forward to express his regrets if he had not required my assistance. It took him eight years to recognize that he had made a mistake, and here he was, repeating exactly the kind of behavior that I had detested him for. I had loathed him for it. I made an effort to explain this to my mother, but she just couldn't seem to get past the fact that he had accepted responsibility for his actions, regardless of how late it was, and that this was significant. As an alternative to behaving in this manner, she said that I should forgive him and present myself as a more mature individual since I should most certainly assist him. The truth is, even if I wanted to, I don't believe I would be able to assist him in any way. I am a friend of his attorney, and I am very certain that I will be able to ask him to talk to his father and collaborate with my father. But I do not believe that I will be able to persuade them to reduce the price of their services. The most qualified divorce attorney in the area does not come at a low cost. Therefore, why would I even want to commit to something that I am not even sure I could accomplish? Because of this, my mother and I ended up having a heated discussion about it for approximately 30 minutes, and by the time the phone call was over, we were both feeling very aggravated with each other. On the other hand, she simply refused to view things from my perspective, and I was unable to comprehend what she was talking about since I did not believe that she made any sense. At this point, we are also not communicating with one another, and I am pondering whether or not I made a mistake in this regard. Though I don't believe that what I did with my father was particularly inappropriate, the response that I received from my mother is leading me to believe otherwise. I'm not sure if I made the right decision when I declined to assist my estranged father in the divorce proceedings. Consequently, I have made the decision that I will not interact with either of my parents. Following the manner in which my father dealt with me, I do not owe him anything. You guys in the comments are absolutely correct. The fact that he apologized to me a few weeks after discovering the truth is evidence that he would not have apologized if he did not require my assistance. He apologized literally weeks after discovering the truth. I would like to express my gratitude to everyone who left a comment. I really needed it. Regarding my mother, um, I am not really sure what has gotten into her or why she is siding with my father after such a long period of time during which she has not communicated with him. On the other hand, I am not very interested in learning what is going on. During our conversation, I inquired as to whether or not she was in contact with my father and whether or not she was talking to him. She responded with a negative. It was revealed to me that she had not communicated with my father for the past eight years, following the fact that I had been expelled from the boarding house. Nevertheless, he was the one who had attempted to get in touch with her on the day that I had slammed the door shut squarely in his face. She explained to me that he had been crying, which was the reason why she had chosen to listen to what he had to say. My father is not exactly a particularly emotional man, and it is quite difficult to make him weep, so she wanted to know what was going on that had caused him to contact her. She wanted to know what was going on. She was able to learn the truth about what had transpired when he attempted to apologize to me in this manner. In addition to that, she had not communicated with him in the past eight years till that point. Considering that she was in the exact same position as I was at the time, I find it difficult to believe that. It would be more challenging for her to forgive him as a result of the divorce that occurred between my parents. They were really good friends, and I think that this event has brought them back together or whatever has brought them back together. No matter what it is, the response of my mother has made me realize that she doesn't know me as well as I had previously believed she did, and she most certainly does not comprehend what I am saying. In the event that she had, she would not have become angry with me for not immediately forgiving my former father. Whatever the case may be, I'm going to avoid both of them as much as possible. It is not going to be all that tough for me to refrain from communicating with my father because I have been doing so for the past eight years already. On the other hand, it is going to be very challenging for me to avoid interacting with my mother. Over the course of a number of years, she has been the only family that I have ever known, and now I have unfortunately lost her as well. Despite the fact that I feel terrible about it, there is not much that I can do about it. I will give her a week to apologize for what she said and how she responded to it. I will give her that time. In the event that she comes to her senses within that time frame, then that would be fantastic. However, if she does not, I am at a loss for what I will do. After that, I might have to cut her off forever and the entire idea of doing so makes me feel a great deal of sadness. Nonetheless, I am unable to stop myself from doing so. It is also necessary for me to watch out for myself. Update 2. 
All right, one week hasn't yet passed, but my mother did get in touch with me. Regretfully, it was not to atone. I wanted to test if she would talk to me, so I hadn't blocked her on anything. She did. She believed it would be better to personally clear the air. Hence, she texted me yesterday, asking whether she could visit me and have a personal conversation with me. Since I wanted to straighten things out with her as well and I honestly felt she would apologize, I agreed to let her visit. I therefore treated her quite kindly in everything when she came around. She began by saying she had been considering our last chat and perhaps she hadn't tried to understand me that well, so she was here to give that conversation another go. She asked me to say the same things which seemed a little strange, but I did it hoping it would help her understand where I was coming from and maybe she would find it simpler to apologize to me so we could call this once and for good. After I finished expressing my emotions about this whole matter, though, mom informed me she wanted me to have the same conversation with my father now that we had coolly gone over this. She understood my dad needed an explanation for everything and I could respond with respect instead of slamming doors closed. He persuaded Becca to do the same, even though he had believed I had taken her money. He did not call the cops on me, it makes no difference that everything was made up. What counts is that he made every effort to shield me even though he believed I had done the wrong thing. I might so provide him an opportunity to speak with me at least. She would not say no since she knew her daughter had been raised to be kind at heart. But I told her I had no forgiveness in my heart for my father and she did not know me as well as she believed she did. In the past, he treated me like garbage. I have nothing to owe him. Not even an apology. Her not apologizing to me even after all of this infuriated me. I thus advised her to only get in touch with me should she like to apologize following this. I wanted no communication with her otherwise. She then became fidgety and advised me not to act this way as family is all we have at the end of the day. Our life will be horrible if we cannot even rely on them to pardon our mistakes. I asked her to leave as I felt it was just a lot of BS and told her I did not want to talk to her or address this anymore. She told me at last that she cannot leave as she had promised my father she would get me to speak to him. She couldn't go as she had to live up to her promises, unless I told her I would talk to him at least once. She truly wanted me to get things out with my dad. She said she was truly sorry I felt that both my parents had let me down, but ultimately they were my parents and I should forgive them. She said she did not want to lose me. That counts for something since the few mistakes they made were negligible compared to all they had done well in the past. Her even stating that seemed absurd to me. It was her error I informed her that she had promised my father she could not even know she could live up to, and it was not my duty to see she kept her word. Once more, I urged her to go, but then she told me she cannot since my dad was waiting to be summoned inside from outside in the car. She wanted not to disappoint him. I at last snapped and began to yell at my mother. This was violated really seriously. She had taken the liberty of bringing my father here, confident she could sway my opinion, but I had made it quite obvious to her I did not want to talk to him. I naturally lost my cool and began yelling at her. I said I was done with her and that she was a horrible mother. She started crying, but it made no difference to me since I was enraged. She kept saying she was sorry about all of this, but I simply kept begging her to leave. I was not in the mood to hear it. After around 15 minutes of dispute, she at last went. I screamed at her as she was leaving and warned her that I would call the cops on her or my father should they ever return. I blocked her then and I believe I should discuss with a lawyer obtaining a protective order against these individuals should they choose to pay me another visit. Update 3. Alright, so something literally crazy occurred today and I have no idea how to approach anyone about it. I am here to discuss this since I truly need to get this off my mind. Having a day off, I stayed at home today and intended to do nothing. Then Becca and Alexa arrived and that is not even the most wild aspect of what transpired today. I became enraged when I found they were standing outside my door. I advised them to leave right away and I even called the cop's number. Becca, however, informed me she was there to tell me the truth about my father and specifically why he needed my help not to bother me. It was good to know she hadn't changed in eight years. She was exactly as unpleasant and rude as before. Originally, I had no desire in talking to her, so I told her whatever she had to say I was not interested. She then remarked, however, that if I understood what she was here to tell me and could explain why my mother had been abruptly on my dad's side following years of silence, I would most definitely be intrigued. Apparently, I'm not going to lie. That surprised me since I assumed she would not know about any of this. After some thought, I asked her in as I truly wanted to know what was going on. She insisted, though, that she was merely coming to tell me the truth and would be leaving without even entering my house. Her daughter told me that a few weeks ago her parents had told her father the truth about the incident that had happened eight years ago just outside my door. They started a furious argument about it and he resolved to file for divorce. She had been arguing with her parents since she stopped monthly paying them money as she used to. She became a little too avaricious in case someone wanted to know exactly what they had been fighting over. Even my father wasn't providing the kind of allowance she desired. She started some investigation after her father had decreased her allowance without explanation and discovered that my dad was seeing my mother. She understood he had been conserving money as he most likely intended to be leaving her. She thus chose to remain with him and subsequently apply for a divorce under her own terms finally. But her dad discovered the truth before she could act 
therefore their whole conflict took place. They both discovered their own actual hues. Under normal conditions, my dad could have easily ended our marriage without handing Becca anything. But Becca had not worked in the past 10 years, and since he had also been cheating and disloyal to her, she wrote up a petition that would help her. He was not comfortable with that, hence they were battling valiantly. She was telling me all of this because apparently, my father had threatened her on the phone a few days ago and advised her to back off since I was supposed to forward him to the divorce attorney and, subsequently, she would be screwed. He was obviously lying, but Becca wanted not to take that chance. She had come to tell me the truth. Though in a sense I was relieved that I at last had an explanation for why my mother had been acting so strangely about my father. I was genuinely stunned that all of this was occurring. Becca said it was up to me whether I wanted to help my dad or not once she had told me everything. She then walked away. She had been of some real benefit to me for the first time in her life and I'm appreciative of that. I will never be able to maintain contact with my parents once again after this either. It astounds me that my mother tried to gaslight me into thinking my dad deserved a second shot for her own self-serving needs. My parents most certainly fit each other, they are a match made in heaven. Not being in their life anymore makes me happy. Now that I live alone I would like to thank my lucky stars for having the wise decision not to give any of them another chance. Update 4 Hi, many wanted to know how things were doing with me since I last blogged here some few months ago. I'm really pleased on my own. It's been going rather well. Though I do miss my mother sometimes, I remind myself of how she deceived me and it helps me to cope with her absence a little bit. A few relatives told me that my dad is now back with my mother once more. His divorce was settled a few weeks ago. I'm not very interested in understanding exactly what he lost in the divorce either. A few of my cousins have been invited to the couple's wedding in a few weeks. Though I don't really care they wanted me to know about it in case I wanted to show up and straighten things out with them. I most definitely want nothing right with them. Right now, life is as it should be. I'm happier and better off living alone, so I'm really satisfied. Thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so and hit the notification bell to stay updated with more shocking real-life stories happening around you.